Hello YouTubers, welcome to another episode. Today, we're figuring out what my Zone 2, my UT2, my steady state speeds are, whatever you want to call your low intensity workout speeds. And how are we gonna do that? We're gonna do a step test. So we're gonna do four minute intervals repeatedly, and in between each interval, we're gonna take blood from the ear to get our lactic acid levels, and then do some science, do some calculations in the background, and give us specific splits slash wattages for our low intensity and even higher intensity workouts. So we're going to start off with a warm up and then get on to building the intensity through and then have a little bit of a chat about what my individual low intensity UT2 steady state zone 2 watts are. Okay, warm up complete. A lovely two minutes flat for 10 minutes. Now we get on to the the meat and potatoes of the step test. So four minute intervals, stepping on in intensity, and we're just basically gonna stop as soon as we hit four millimoles. So we'll see how far we get in. This is not a flat out workout. What I am interested is to see what my numbers are today, but also compare them to previous numbers. I've got step tests going back more than a decade. So I've got plenty of data to compare to, and it'll be interesting because my training has shifted on the beach sprint side to being more explosive. Will that change where my zone two UT2 steady state splits are? We'll find out together. And that is the step test complete. I ended up doing all of the intervals and before the step test I was asked about splits and I maybe undersold myself a little bit so I did all the splits. Usually you do five or six um, based on a previous 2K, which is probably quite a good sign um, that I was able to do the seven without the lactate going super high. It would suggest fitness is increasing versus the 2K, what's that, a couple months ago. Um, but I'm really interested to see what the data today is like compared to data maybe last year, two years, three years, four years, 10 years ago. Now we cool down, we dry off, it's a very sweaty workout. And then we'll see about the comparison results. And of course, what my zone two, UT2 steady state splits, according to the step test should be. Yeah. Okay, the step test is complete. We've recovered, we've got some food, because remember, food is fuel, and now we have the results. So I'm gonna go over the results, and then I'll talk about a little bit more on zones, uh, what the step tests actually do, and what it means going forward. So the results, my two millimole was 319 watts, my four millimole was 353 watts. So, in theory, for some people, that means my UT2, Zone 2, Steady State should be 143. I should, in theory, according to some, be able to hold 143 forever. Okay, now I'm going to explain why that isn't true, at least for me, and why you should really work out what your individual zone is, rather than looking at general measures of what your training zones are because as I've always said everyone 
is their own individual and what my zones are could be very different to yours and you need to adjust to what you or what is best for you. So a step test basically measures your lactate as you saw and then gives you measures at two millimole and four millimole. Traditionally, that's usually where your lactate sort of changes gradient and it gives you an idea of, okay, are you two millimole? You should be able to hold that for around or for a longer period of time. Are you four millimole? That's sort of your hard work. And that's very, very basic. And you can explain that very differently and probably in a much better way, but really that's kind of it. Realistically, especially for me, my two millimole level is not where I can physically sit for a long period of time. I generally will sit at much closer to one millimole for my steady state work. My heart rate for my two millimole, according to this step test, should be around about 160 or so, 155, 160. Whereas I sit for my steady state, my zone two, much, much lower, closer to 130. And that's where, that's what I want to highlight the differences between zone two and UT2 and steady state. The people apply the same names to very different things and you have to make sure that what you're doing is the right thing for you. So zone two and UT2 are not the same. Zone two, well, Okay, zone two for me and UT2 are not the same. Zone two for others could be the same. How I understand zone two is a heart rate zone. A heart rate zone and zone two specifically in a five zone model is much lower than a two millimole zone or two millimole level, if that makes sense. But again, that can be very different and it depends on your fitness. Your zone two heart rate could be very close to your UT2 heart rate. In my case, it's quite far off. I cannot hold 143 for an hour, 90 minutes plus. For me, my zone two splits are closer to 152, 154, and it can vary on the day. Sometimes I'm feeling super fresh. I could sit at maybe 149. Sometimes I've had a big training week and I'll sit closer to 155. And that is another important point. You can have a zone, and if you have a very narrow zone that you ha you feel like you have to hit a specific heart rate split or uh, even lactate level, if it's so specific, it's very difficult to be able to adjust for things that happen day to day, whether it's temperature change, fatigue change, or maybe you've even had a bad night's sleep. All of those can affect your training efficiency on the day. So be very careful in very specific zones, regardless of how you figure those zones to be. So the step test this time was actually really good for me. It was about two watts off of my all time best zone uh, step test. And on the four millimole, it was about 21 watts lower. So a little bit lower than a four millimole, but a two millimole, very close to my best. It's really good for me because I can compare my step test results going all the way back to 2015. And that's where the step test can, can come in, is it gives you a quite a good reference point of how your body was on that day, on that period, and you can compare that to what's in the past, or hopefully in our case, later on in the season, we'll do another step test and see how we can compare. Maybe my two millimole will be higher than 319 watts. Maybe my four millimole will be higher than 353. That ideally is the point of training. We increase those numbers for essentially the same intensity. And that should be the idea with all of your training is your body gets more efficient, you get fitter, you get stronger, but depending on the training that you do can change if we're talking about the lactates. If you do a lot of low intensity training, it's going to make you better at low intensity training. If you do a lot of high intensity training, it's going to make you better at the high intensity. So you have to get a balance of both so that you're able to do both in theory. But of course, as always, depends on your physiology and what works for you. And you can't just only really focus on one and then think that that's going to help the other massively.
There will be some crossover, of course. So doing a lot of low intensity will, if you've heard more about that base of the pyramid, so that then when you do add intensity, you can build upon that pyramid and go in the opposite way. It can be really difficult just to do a lot of high intensity because then you, if you've not done a lot of low intensity, because in theory, you've not got a very wide base, so the pyramid can only get so high. So that's a lot of sort of my focus or my sort of outlook on zones. Um, and that is my sort of training zones themselves. I will be doing my training zones as I have been doing. I won't be doing 143 for my steady state for my, my UT2. I will be sticking to my steady state around that 152 and a half range. So again, a little bit slower if I'm tired, a little bit faster if I'm not. And hopefully over time, I can drop that down. Instead of that 152 and a half range, maybe a 151 and a half range, or maybe even a 150 range. Hopefully over time, as I get fitter, that comes down. But for you as an individual, I really recommend figuring out what is your intensity for the heart rate zones. Everyone has a different heart rate, different heart rate max, different heart rate sort of sensitivity. I recommend 75% to 60% of maximum heart rate for your steady state training. The reason I recommend that is because it genuinely makes it really easy. It may not be the best for everyone. Some people may feel that's super, super easy and they're not getting anything from it. Sometimes that can be a sign that you actually need more aerobic training. And on the other side of things as well, with that low intensity that is genuinely 60 to 75% of your maximum heart rate, it means that you're getting a benefit of that training and you're still able to do other training. So you're not getting nothing out of the training if it feels really easy. And then if you add other training on top of that, whether it's higher intensity intervals or longer distance work at a higher intensity, higher rate, that lower intensity work is only going to benefit the other work. And there's plenty of benefits to that lower intensity being properly low and in low intensity. Let me know in the comments below if you want me to make a, another video talking about that specifically. I have a few in the channel, but they are a little bit old. And I have over time made a lot of videos talking about zone two training, uh, low intensity training, high intensity training, which zone you should do, the benefits of this training or that training. I've done a lot over the last 10, 15 years of elite sport. So if you would like me to talk a bit more about that again, let me know in the comments below. And that will be it for today's step test video. Hopefully you enjoyed a little bit behind the scenes again. As always, if you think I can improve or you think I can talk about something else, let me know in the comments below. If you like the video, hit that like button and I will see you in the next episode, whatever it may be.